All right, I want to show you an example of hypothesis testing. Uh, this particular video is using the critical value method, as you can see up here at the top. And there are six steps. You know, different books have different number of steps. Um, I'm just going to show you this method. It's the six steps of hypothesis testing. Um, and again, this is using the critical value method. In a separate video, I, I will show you how to use the p-value method. For a particular example. So take a look at this. We have the alkaline batteries of a toy car were designed to last 30 hours on average and we know what the population standard deviation is. It's uh, 2.95 hours. Now a lot of customers were complaining because the batteries that they were using were lasting less than 30 hours and so let's say that you decide to randomly sample 38 of those batteries and you found that they had a mean life, those 38 batteries have a mean life of 29.3 hours. And the question is, is there sufficient evidence at the 5% level of significance to support the claim that the mean battery uh, life is, uh, is actually less than 30? So walking through these six steps, the first thing you should do is to state the null and the alternative hypotheses. And and then I suggest you decide which one is the claim. Uh, that's pretty important as well here in step one, decide which of these is the claim, the null, or the alternative, because we're going to, it's in our final step, state the conclusion of the hypothesis test. All right, so you'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. But let's start with something easy. Let's start with the null and the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so keep in mind that the, uh, the, the batteries for this toy car were designed to last 30 hours on average, okay? Let me show you how we're going to define the hypotheses. So um, it's always going to be, at least in this particular example, it's going to be mu, right? That's not the letter mu, it's just the letter u, but let's pretend it's a mu. The population mean is going to be equal to 30 hours. That's our null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis, this is, um, you know, what the... Uh, what a lot of users of these toy cars realize is they, they think that it's actually less than 30 hours. Okay, so I'm gonna type that in there as well. Now at this particular stage, I'm going to show you that, um, that this thing right here, the alternative hypothesis in this example is the claim. So that's why I'm highlighting it. In fact, I can even do this here. Let me just draw a little arrow here next to this and say hey, this right here is the claim. Excuse my chicken scratch. Okay, this is important because we're going to need it later on for steps number, number six. Okay, the next thing is we we're told to use a level of significance of, um, of 5%. So because our level of significance is 5%, that's an alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Um, and let me just stop right here for a moment. Okay, this, these are the first two steps in the hypothesis testing. But let me just draw a picture as to what's going on here. We have, um, we have a normal distribution, so it's bell-shaped, right? That's easy enough. It's not gonna be perfect, but close enough. And uh, we are told that the level of significance is 0.05. Um, let me talk about step two and step four are related to each other. The critical value that you're going to come up with from step four is based off of the level of significance um, in step two. So uh, just keep that in mind. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you step four in just a moment, but it's based off of this level of significance um, from step two. You know, sometimes alpha is not just 5%. Sometimes it's 1%, sometimes it's 10%. Um, so it could be any any number. Those are the more popular ones, 1%, 5%, or 10%. But you know, you could you could change alpha to whatever uh, whatever you want. Sometimes it's the level of significance is not given to you, and typically 0.05 is, is probably the more popular one. Um, okay, so we're we're gonna come back to step four in just a second. Let me, I don't want to skip over a step, so let's go to step three. Let's calculate the test statistic. And I've got the formula here for you. You can see it right there. It's um, take your sample mean and subtract the um, population mean 
of those sample averages, all right, so the mean of the means. Um, and then we're going to divide it by standard error. Standard error is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So I've got that already worked up here. I've got that already worked up here on my calculator. So we were told that the average of these 38 batteries was 29.3. From that, I'm going to subtract the mu, which is 30 hours. And then I'm going to divide that by, and then I open up another set of parentheses because I've got two things going on in the denominator, right? So I've got uh, my standard deviation 2.95, population standard deviation 2.95, divided by the square root of n. We had 38 batteries. So when I crunch all that together, now this is going to give me a z value, so I'm going to round this off to two decimal places, and I'm going to call this negative 1.46. I'm going to do that over here. I'm going to punch in a negative 1.46. Right, that's our test statistic. Very, very important number. Now that's a negative z value, so it's going to be on the left side of zero. So if I was to go back to my drawing, you would see that over here, if you want to put zero in the middle, right? our test statistic is uh, negative 1.46, so somewhere over here to the left side of 0. Right? There's our test statistics coming from this guy right here. Okay, well, the, the critical value that we're going to come up with in step 4, like I mentioned a moment ago, is coming from step 2. It's coming from that level of significance. So in this particular case, alpha is 0.05. What we're really going to do is this. Here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw, fill this in with a shaded to the left. And the reason I'm shading to the left, by the way, is because our claim, look at our claim here, was mu was less than 30. So since it's less than, I'm shading to the left. Right? So that's not so bad. Shade to the left. Um, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what is the z value that's sitting right here? What is the z value that gives us an area? I'm using the correct notation here. This really means whose area to the right of it is 0.95, or the area to the left of it is 0.05. This area here, I hope you realize, is 0.05. Right? Everything to the right of this particular z value Everything over here to the right of it is 0.95. Okay, so I want to know what is this z number? What is this critical value right here? This z score. Well, you could look this up on a table. Um, you could actually, if you have your calculator, you can use inverse norm. That works as well. Uh, here, I'll show you how to do that with your TI 83 or 84. You just hit second distribution down to the third option, which is inverse norm. And if you feed it 0.05, you'll see that it gives you a critical value of negative 1.64. Negative 1.64. Now, do you see that our test statistic, though, of negative 1.46 is not in, right? It's, it's over here. It's not in this uh, shaded area. It's not in this left tail at all. So because it's not in the tail, we're now ready to answer step five. Step five is, all right, what are you going to say, what are you going to state regarding the null hypothesis? And because this is not in the critical area, then the null hypothesis is going to be stated this way. We're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Right, we're going to fail to reject it. If our test statistic, if this value here happens to be in the tail, you know, what if we had calculated a test statistic of, say, negative 1.80 something or even negative 1.65? Um, that would be in the tail. You know, anything smaller than negative 1.64 would put us in this shaded area, this reject region over here. So because we were not in that region, we're failing to reject, but if we were, we would reject the null hypothesis. I hope that's clear. Okay, so we're not in the reject region. I'm failing to reject. And what I like to do sometimes here as well is this. I like to sometimes say, okay, if I'm failing to reject the null, then going back over here to step one, 
I like to sometimes put an arrow going up, almost like a thumbs up on the null, saying, look, I'm not rejecting you. And in essence, I'm rejecting the alternative. It's like a thumbs down on the alternative, which means I just thumbs down, I just rejected the claim, right? The claim was the alternative. If I am accepting, so to speak, I put that in quotes, if I'm failing to reject the null, then I am rejecting the alternative. I don't have enough evidence to support the claim. In this particular case, that's where the claim is. It's in the alternative. So my final step then in step six is going to be that um, there is not sufficient evidence the claim. Uh, I can't just stop there. I have to be, give a little bit more, be a little more specific. Um, at the 0.05 level of significance, that's important because um, if it wasn't 0.05, if it was 10%, uh, I'll let you figure out what's going to happen there. It, the result might be different. Uh, so I do not have enough evidence to support the claim at the 0.05 level of significance. Um, that's where I'm going to stop right there. It's as much as I need to state. So that's how hypothesis testing works for a critical value. Um, you're going to determine if the, if the test statistic is in that tail or is it not in the tail. If it is in the tail, then at step five, you reject the null. If it's not in the tail, then at step five, you fail to reject the null, right? So then you come back over here at step one and you determine, hey, am I gonna do a thumbs up on the null? Did I fail to reject it? Or am I gonna do a thumbs down on the null? Um, am I rejecting the null? And alternatively, if you thumbs up on the null, then you thumbs down on the alternative hypothesis and vice versa. If you thumbs down on the null, you thumbs up on the alternative. And depending on where that claim is, then you can state in step six whether there is sufficient or there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Hope that helps.